Yeah, I think the uh, the Munster, I'll start with the Munster one, that was forced. He had hamstring pain. Um, I just had an update from the medical team. They're saying initial uh, assessment is it's not serious. Um, so that's a positive, but he'll have to, you know, the, the real assessment will happen tomorrow, but the initial assessment is it's not serious. It's not a hamstring pull or tear, which is positive. Might be a small strain. Um, Thiago Martins is fine. Uh, he's getting pain out of his knee. Obviously, he's, he had the knee surgery early in the season, and in, in, in a, a quick turnaround of two games in, in three days, he, he had some pain at the end, but with recovery, he will be fine. Uh, but Risa got a hit on the ankle, which forced him to come off um, in the in the lead up to the penalty. Um, Maxi is being assessed now, so initial thoughts are it's not super serious but that is just a basic assessment he's gonna have to go i think he's going x-ray now and they're looking at it to make to see so i actually can't confirm whether it's serious or not um i think that was it any others you asked me like 10 <laughs> yeah so we looked a bit bad and bruised i thought um Yeah, no, Talas is, is um, I said after the last game, Talas is working really hard, of course. He's somebody that um, we consider as a as a nine. He, I put him in there in the Minnesota game. Um, I put him in there in the in the Cincinnati game. I didn't use him in the in the Montreal game. And I, I went for Richie Ledesma because I thought we needed some players in between the lines. I thought we needed some players that can combine and create some stuff down the sides because um, Vancouver were trying to jump with, with Larea and, and the other wing back. So... Um, I put Santi in the nine because I thought he looked really lively. I wanted to get him from goal chances. I thought he, he could maybe be the difference in the nine. Um, but I was disappointed. I had to take Munsef off, actually. I, I thought he, he, was giving a, he was really stretching the back line. We're going to go with Leo. Coach, thank you for your time. Leo Kaya with Skyscraper Blues. At the end of last game, you kind of briefly mentioned um, Maxime Cheneau leaving the team at a difficult time. And a clip of your statement was posted on Twitter in which uh, Maxime retweeted and quoted difficult moment which was created by, and it was followed by three dots, a hand over mouth emoji and a question mark. Were you aware of this? And if you were, do you have any thoughts or comments on the situation? Um, I'm not aware because I, I don't have social media, so... Um I personally didn't see anything of my comments. Um, I've said before, uh, the Maxime Cheneau situation was between Maxime and the football club. Um, it was a conversation between Maxime, David and Brad around Maxime's own personal situation. So I think it would be wrong of me to get involved in that. Um, you know, it did involve me. So, um, And I also, you know, I don't have social media, so I didn't see it. Thank you, Coach. John Lupo? Uh, Nick, can you just talk about the play of Matt Fries aside from the penalty? It seems like he had the clean sheet against Montreal, and he's been really good all year in balancing playing time with Lewis. He's been a good teammate. They've been competing with each other, pushing each other hard. So do you think he's the established number one? And if not, just, just talk about how good of a teammate he's been and his performance recently, especially heading into this last stretch of games. Um, I thought Matt Fries was... was Good when called upon the other night. I thought it was good when called upon tonight. It's a difficult one. He, he, he loses the clean sheet today because of a penalty. Um, he's been an excellent teammate. All the goalkeepers have. Cody Mizell is an incredible teammate because he doesn't see the field um, and trains and supports. Matt supported Luis. Luis is now supporting Matt. Um, there is definitely not a defined number one. Um, Matt knows this. Luis knows this. It's competition. They're both previously number twos. And... Um, I think I said earlier on in the season to think that one of those guys was going to roll for 34 games is it, it was definitely not going to happen based on pressure and loading and you know the, the the demand of being a number one. Matt's been in now two, but he went in two before and, and I took him back out. He did Toronto, he did he did Red Bull. So um, we have a break, an international break now, and I, I will discuss with Rob, the goalkeeping coach. I will discuss with the guys. We'll see how they train and. 
ultimately we'll pick a team of, of guys that we feel will give us the best chance of winning the next game. Right here in the front. Hi, Arabella Jin with Soccer Long Island Magazine. Um, so you guys were able to score a goal in the second half. Um, with that point, how what's the pressure like um, with the playoff push? Um, of course, it would be below the line. So the pressure is, uh, is, is high because we want to be above the line. I put pressure on myself. Um, you know, the guys are disappointed because we want to win and we've had too many of these games where we play well and we push the game and we show fight and we create chances and we have the ball, but we don't get the result. But we have to fight on. We have to continue to fight. Um, the picture looks a little bit better with a point than it did. We're on 30. We were on 29. I'm sure the results later will dictate whether it looks worse. It's, as I said to the guys then, this is a fight till the end. Whether we'd have won today or drawn, of course we're disappointed we didn't get the win. But either way, it's going to be a fight till the end. It's another three home games now where we've got to fight hard to get points on the board, to get above the line, to make sure that we get ourselves in the in, in the playoffs because um, we're not there yet. And for sure, we're going to continue to fight. We're going to prepare the team for Red Bull and we're going to make sure that we go and fight hard to get three points. Yeah, and a follow-up question to that is, um, shortly after you guys scored, obviously, Vancouver also scored. How are you able to keep team morale up um, after that? Yeah, it's disappointing. We know it's a cheap goal. It comes straight from the kickoff. And it's, you know, we, we, this moment is, is, like, so disappointing. It feels painful now. We have to look at it. We have to work at it. We have to continue to become resilient in these moments. I understand it's a soft one, but I think you get this foul five times out of six is from the wrong side is leaning in is is playing the man before Burke plays the ball but uh, listen uh, there's no I'm not here complaining about referees it's, we had enough chances to win the football game we're going to move on to the zoom uh Scott Churchin hey coach thanks as always for the time uh right now with the uh, break coming up and obviously RBNY coming up in two weeks Talk a little bit, or you know, as much as you're allowed to in this case, about the game plan for going into that match and how you're planning to use the next couple of weeks. Thanks. We'll have to take some time to recover. We'll have to take some time to, uh, you know, it's just difficult to do a, a three-game week. Um, of course, we're going to plan to win the game. You know, we've had some good games here. Last year, we beat Red Bull here. Um, but this year, we've lost to them twice, and, you know, we have a desire to win the game. We always have a huge desire to win the game here at Yankee Stadium, especially against our, our rivals. And um, we'll use the, the break to push really hard to, to, to rest, recover, and then work at making sure we give ourselves the best chance of getting three points in the next game. And final one. Final one, we'll go with Michael Andre. Nick, thanks for the time as well. Uh, we talk a lot about the lineup choices that you make, so I'm curious... Uh, you had a chance, uh, if you kept Richie Ledesma in the lineup, to maybe go back-to-back -back with the same lineup. It's not something you, you do often. Just talk about your philosophy and approach to, uh, to choosing that starting 11 and uh, you know, whether you think consistency would help these guys uh, you know, click and get, and get those three points. No, I, listen, I'll, I'll be honest. If, if you look across my tenure in my previous head coach role and in this one, I'm a guy that always goes for form over freshness. I'm not really a rotator. This year I've rotated a lot more than I have ever because we haven't had form. We haven't got results. We haven't been able to go back to back. Um, so actually the one thing that I did, and I discussed this with David and with, and with my staff, is I went for form by just changing one player. And I think the, the reason I brought Santi in, he's a DP, he's um, a really important guy for us. He's really hungry to to produce for the team and um you know i had the opportunity to pick nine other you know ten others that, that that played the other night so i actually went with four i actually went with the same team and just changing one player and um and reflection maybe we should have changed two or three because i thought we looked flat in the first half i thought we we looked a little leggy and a little bit flat in the first 25 30 minutes so james sands gave us um gave us the life that we needed in the second half